Hello, listeners. I wanted to put this brief message up at the top because there is no mid-roll. I didn't want to interrupt the final episode that you will be hearing. And yes, this is the final episode of our Fallout Evergreen campaign. And I'm so proud of this story. This is the first, like, long campaign that we're ending. And that was always going to be the case, but it hits differently, you know, now that we're here at the finale. You know, we started this campaign as a way to let Jamie be with her family without having to worry about the show and give us a chance to play a different system for a while. And here we are, and it's been like nine months, I think? We got really lucky asking friends of the show, Xavier and Susan, to come aboard for this. Uh, I know when I reached out to them, you know, I was like, hey, we want to do this thing. It's going to be a little minute, but it's not going to be forever. And I know that they are both respectively very busy in their own lives, uh, but they were just so on board, like, yes, let's do this. And they just brought this incredible talent and commitment. And suddenly we were all invested strongly in this game and making this show. And like I said, I just couldn't be more proud of the final outcome. Everyone worked really hard and gave their time and talents, and no one more than Alex Herrera, who put so many hours and creativity into developing this fictional world, learning this new system, and preparing these incredible sessions that just had this Fallout flavor to them. And so I just want to thank... Xavier, Susan, and Jamie for being so on board and being so collaborative, for giving us your time and talent. This definitely won't be the last time you hear from either Xavier or Susan as we move into other campaigns. In fact, Susan will be joining us for our Star Wars story in the very near future. I want to thank Alex for his incredible work, for his dedication to detail and storytelling and willingness to take on the DM role for a while, for a period that we really didn't know how long. This is one of the best and most memorable campaigns that I have ever had the pleasure to be a player in. I want to thank Steve and April and the game developers at Modifius for making this fantastic system, for their generosity and all of their community outreach. They helped us reach a bigger audience and gave so much support and availability to make this project thrive. What an incredible team to have in this community and in this hobby. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank all the various artists who allowed us the use of their music. I shout them out in the credits every episode and I link their work in our show notes. Thank you Miracle of Sound, Cryo Chamber, Lucas King, Near Shore, and the people at the Fallout Cascadia Modding Project. Your generosity and talent really made the atmosphere and helped bring the Fallout flavor to this production. Please go visit and support these artists. And lastly, I want to thank you, the listeners for sticking with us when we decided that we were going to switch up campaigns, characters, and stories. I know some of you are new listeners and you came just for the fallout, and I hope that you'll stay for the rest of the stories that we're going to tell. Thank you for your supportive comments and your community interaction and all your entries in our giveaways and recommendations of us on social media. You all are amazing, and we are so grateful for your listenership, and I hope that this campaign resonates with you as it has resonated with us. So thank you all very much, and please enjoy the final episode of Respect the Crits, Fallout Evergreen. Hello and welcome to Respect the Crit. I'm your host, Ian Duncan. My pronouns are he, him. And I'm playing Sunny Takasi, the ghoul merchant of the wasteland. And playing in this Fallout game with me are some incredible people and some very good friends. Please welcome Xavier Trudeau Duchenne. Hello, hello everybody. I'm Xavier, he, him, and I play Lance Burnett, the human vault dweller. How are you feeling about uh, this session tonight? I'm feeling great. Uh, it feels good. 
just knowing that this might be the one. Uh, I'm I welcome every every outcome. Uh, I'm excited. That's probably the best thing that that we can be is excited, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, excited right along with us. Please welcome Susan Spinader. I'm Susan. I'll be playing Jerry, the nomadic survivor of the waste. Uh, she goes. I go by she her. That's that's pronouns. <laughs> I had to think about it for a second. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, well, I was confusing myself and her. Uh, well, they. Uh, she goes by she they. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time this campaign ends yeah, the lies are blurring oh no everyone quick <laughs> I'm losing track of myself and them <laughs> yeah, how are all of you feeling <laughs> for this session <laughs> bittersweet I am I'm feeling it I'm feeling those feels right now yeah yeah like as soon as you said to Xavier I was like how you feeling about this last session? I was like, oh, last. <laughs> well, there's still time for us to uh, pull this minecart right, uh, right off the tracks. Yeah, let's turn around. <laughs> let's just go <Yeah>. back. <laughs> there's still time for us to uh, make make Alex's life hard. <laughs> you know, I think I need to return to the NCR. Okay, cool. Let's go back then. You guys, I need an escort back. Let's go. Forgot my keys. <laughs> I love the stove on. I really got to get back. <laughs> yeah, got to go. Got to go. Uh, well, uh, also here to play with us, who I guess is going back to New California. <laughs> Please welcome <laughs> Jamie Lee Bonnet. <laughs> Hi there. I am Jamie. I play Trish, the NCR Ranger. We are both she, her. How are you feeling? How are you feeling about this going into this? I think Susan nailed it on the head. It's bittersweet. You know, I have so much fun playing with you guys and even just like hanging out. So it's going to be be sad. Whatever happens, it feels like a like an ending, right? Yeah. 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 The uh, overseer who is going to bring us this ending, who has put this incredible world in front of us and brought this whole game to life. Please welcome Alex Herrera. Hello, I am Alex. He him overseer for our adventure into the Fallout worlds, more specifically the Evergreen. It is sad. This is the ultimately the final episode, but I can tell you, uh, I am very tired of preparing. It's it's very it's, <laughs> it's a difficult endeavor. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not that yes. it's not enjoyable, but you know, I I would like to go back to just playing my raspy voice self on the in Star Wars universe. And we miss him too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not have to create a bunch of like flow charts and stuff like that. Just sit back. That was fun. Playing the flow chart. Making the flow chart was probably like, that was the first time I actually executed it a hundred percent for a campaign. Normally it's just kind of, you know, all over the place, whatever. I feel like this was a good exercise for planning and execution, but you guys were huge and instrumental in developing a lot of things in this world too. Things that I didn't see coming to be honest. So I feel like, I think I mentioned on Twitter, it's it's not that I built this, we built this. This was all of us, for sure, in some capacity. So, thank you, guys. And uh, tonight's episode, tonight's game, I would like to say is a culmination of all of our efforts. Uh, and I hope it doesn't disappoint in terms of action and suspense. I don't think it will. I, I none of it hasn't been disappointing yet. So I think you're on on track to have this be an incredible, incredible story, whatever the ending is. And speaking of that, let's get into it, Alex. Please, maybe for the last time, take us into the evergreen. Cut to an interior of a building. Two floors, at least two stories in this building. The first floor is covered with, or at least not covered, but filled with these single occupancy cells that have metal sheet walls where two cells would meet so that no two cells can see into each other. And there's a small rectangular slit up top as a window so that you know oxygen can pass through from cell to cell. Each one of you was placed in a separate cell. You hear energy pulsing through the bars. 
Uh, so there are some sort of electro electric fence of some kind. The doors face outwards on each cell. And you can see from your vantage point the second floor has a catwalk where there are Brotherhood Knights unarmored, just, you know, in regular combat armor patrolling. There's a small box up top that's a, like some sort of main control room. And you can see there are two individuals in there talking at these computer uh, monitors, these terminals. Uh, I would say it's probably about an hour, an hour and a half to when you were first brought in. Uh, they didn't do anything besides take your guns and your gear. They left you your normal clothing. Uh, Lance, your vault suit is obviously on your person. They left. They let you have your glasses. Well, no, to be actually like the shot he got, how I see it, he got grazed like on the side of his eye socket to like, I, I think he lost top of his ear, like the just the fleshy part. It just like burned a long line like to the back of the, the, the head and like it's all hairless now and like his glasses are broken. It was for for like close reading anyway. Yeah. So, the... Still hot though. Yeah. That's still hot. Still re still re <laughs> he's recovering now. Yeah. Anime hair Come anime back. scar hot lance. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jerry, they found your switchblade. So that was obviously taken. Whoa. But Why? <laughs> Everything else is dead. I would like Sunny because you were the last one. I think that got put into the cell. You were the most. You put up the most struggle. You put up the most resistant. I need you to roll a d6 for me, please. I got a four. Sunny is a talkative guy and has been in the cell for about an hour and a half. It's getting to him. The isolation, right? It's not. He doesn't like this. Normally, especially now, he's traveled with his buddies. He's got a group. He's got friends. You hear a voice finally. You look to the cell on the left. You must be one of the new people they brought in. Yep. Sonny. Sonny Takasi. Who am I talking to? Well, it depends on who you ask. Uh, but right now, I've been called Mark, normally. Mark, uh, your dad says your name is Marcos. You hear shuffling out of a bed. What? My dad? How do you? Uh, misses you a lot. Him and y him and your brother, Jamie. I think his name was. You're not like a headhunter, are you? What? I mean, well, if you are, you did a shitty job because I'm still alive and you're locked up. No, nope, I'm just a merchant. <laughs> We've been looking for you, though. I'm glad to find you alive. I gotta say, you dragged us all the way around the Evergreen. Looking for me? Are you... Are you with them? No. No. But they're looking for you, too. Uh, ran into a couple of people that are pretty upset about all that. Uh, yeah, I, I know. Uh, look, Mr. Uh, Merchant Sonny, right? Uh, if you've got a plan to get out of here, now's the time to do it. Well... <laughs> He looks around, there's just like steel walls and like pulsating energy bars. Can't say I do. Uh, but if the people that uh, I came in with are around here, uh, they might uh, they might think of something. Hey, you uh, know where Olivia is? Is she around? V, Yeah, V's here. I don't know where, but she's here. I've called out a few times. I don't know. She can't hear me. When did you get picked up? on your way to Hollow Lake, I assume. Uh, we're not going there anymore. No kidding. Yeah, it's, uh, the other ones. Uh, they've been there the whole time. Really? Yeah, it's like another base. Uh, I've always wondered why it was always so safe, you know, from people I met back in First Hill, the other workers and people passing through. And getting close, I realized you know it, it's it's a stronghold uh, there's an old couple that live well, not old, they're a young couple that lives there and they're basically, they run the shots there really? I'm assuming because you're still alive the brotherhood they don't know that you were with the cause yeah, they, they don't know anything <sighs> I think the reason tensions are so high right, and then you hear in the background the, the artillery shells kind of firing back and forth. The building you're in shakes a little bit. It's because 
the others are looking for me because they think I'm gonna spill some secrets or something, which I wasn't planning on doing, but if I get out of here and make it out, I'll sell their secrets to everyone and anyone I can. Uh, I think Brotherhood got wind of a message that they misinterpreted, and now, through sheer luck, they found out about Holler Lake, and they don't know what I am. Well, for now, uh, we're gonna try and keep it that way. You and Via just kids running away, trying to elope, right? The plan is to get out of the Evergreen. You know, it wasn't my plan. I just, it's difficult to explain, mister. You know, it's, it's not every day you find someone you can connect with out here. You know, someone who is smart and listens to you and can understand your troubles just from listening to you talk. It's, it's rare. He'll stop and he'll say, who sent you? If it wasn't them or the steel bozos, who sent you? Olivia's mother, if you can believe it. Oh. She misses her, as does your family. And we're, we didn't come all the way out here to drag you back. We came out here to make sure you were safe and tell you that your families miss you. That's it. <laughs> kind of stupid when I say it out loud, huh? I mean, a little bit, but... Eh, uh, I've done dumber things. I'm sorry, Sonny. I I just don't buy it that you're here to check up on us. Someone sent you here to bring one of us back. And I have to tell you, I don't have any intention of going back, and neither does V. Not because, you know, we want to abandon the people we care about, but we know that our life won't work here. There's no future that involves us staying in the Evergreen. You sound a little rough. If you don't mind me asking, are you okay? I mean, yeah, I am bleeding. I am definitely bleeding. He's got like he's got like his uh, his suit open. He's got like band aids on him, but it's just like bleeding through the band aids, like his withered ghoul body. Our camera cuts off or moves off of Sunny Sunny's face into another cell. Jerry wakes up. Sideways in the bed. Sits up. Sees that she has a corner cell where one wall has a door and the other has bars. And the other two are solid steel with the open slits up top. Go ahead and roll a d6 for me, Susan, please. I rolled the five. There's whistling in the cell behind you. It's a friendly tune. The whistling makes you feel really warm and comfortable. You're like, and then a voice calls out from the other side. Sorry about that, stranger. What's your name? It, it It's Jerry. The voice suddenly changes. Oh, you know, I met someone named Jerry a little while back, actually. Real cool lady. You wouldn't happen to be the Jerry who wears all those nice clothes at the same time, would you? What do you mean by nice? Well, I mean, you know, really cool looking shirts, sweaters, Scarves. Okay, I have a lot of layers, but... Sorry, you don't recognize the voice. Ah, uh, it... I, I'm the townie. I sold you guys a couple of things back then. Oh, okay. Yeah, you were real cool. Oh, that's great to hear. Thank you. Appreciate it. Unfortunately, I don't think we find ourselves in a real cool situation here with these uh, Brotherhood folk. Those iron megalomaniacs took my cat, my stuff... They got it locked up somewhere, but, you know, I'm not one to advocate violence, but if I get out of here, I'm definitely blowing this place up. I think I could get us out of here. Alex, do I still have these tin lockpicks on me? Why don't you give me a d20 roll? Let's say 10 or lower, no. Ooh! Oh. Jerry reaches into her boot. One lockpick is in there. You got it. One bobby pin. Okay. They left me with one. I'm sorry, I don't quite follow. One what? One lockpick. If there was a sound of a smile, you'd hear it. Tell you what, Jer. I'll make a little interference for you. And you pick that lock. I'll keep 
one of these guys busy and you just loop around sneak up behind him give him the old one two let me out and then we can cause some chaos that sounds real good to me Lance and Trish our camera moves up goes across to another set of cells kind of separate from these you two are in cells that are connected uh, but you don't have a steel wall separating you so you can see into each other's cell Lance your eye is recovering slowly as they give you some sort of ointment really quickly it's almost some sort of like military-esque spray or something uh, it heals but I mean the scar is still there and you have the remnants of your glasses in your hand. Trish, you don't have your trench coat, so uh, they took away plus 10 cool points from you, and it is, it will not stand. This will not stand. Yeah, this this coat will be replaced. Uh, your cells are facing each other. There's one cell be- uh, behind, I would say, Trish's, with a little window slit. And you're gonna hear like a, a woman kind of singing to herself. Hmm, hmm. Mm-hmm. Trish is going to run up to the bars and just, hello, is somebody else there? Yeah, uh, uh, hi, um, um, there's somebody here, yeah. Um, they don't like us talking too much, though. Oh, okay. Um, hi, what, uh, what, what's your name? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm V. And I think while having this conversation that we're going to have, Trish is going to sort of look around the cell and try to see just the general surroundings. Take a general perception oh. vibe check. Don't even need to roll for this. Uh, Trish, with her NCR training, looks around. One guard is currently on patrol on the catwalk. Nobody down here. There is an office or some sort of like foreman office that I mentioned before, and it is directly above you and Lance. There is a window looking down, but the two who, men who are in there are manning these control panels seem to be distracted with something else as their heads don't pop up near the glass that's facing you guys. The pattern of this patrol is every couple minutes. So there's plenty of time to cause some chaos or something before they come around again. Trish is gonna look over to Lance. He seems like holding back, like just a f- tossing a, t- not a, not a tantrum, but just like yelling like a spoiled teenager. So he's just so mad uh, and he kind of stands up V? Olivia? Yeah. How do you... How do you know my name? My full name? Your mom misses you. There is a deathly silence. My mom? Yeah, Amelia. She um, wanted to be sure you're, you were safe and you didn't get kidnapped. I know. I tried to leave a message for my mom. I tried. It's just I didn't have enough time. The agents were coming to First Hill. Mark found out about it. We had to leave. It's just... It's okay. It's a, It was hard, but we traced back all your steps, and we get it. If we get out of here, we'll help you leave. Go wherever you want. I just want to go back to your mama and tell her you're safe. I, I have, like, a bunch of letters for her, but I don't have them with me because... Those bastards took him from... Ah, I shouldn't say bad word. I shouldn't say that. I mean, sometimes, man, you know, those assholes in the armor... Ah, there I go. V, there is a time for cussing, and this is a time to cuss. Yeah, I... I, Cuss your ass off. Okay, fuck those guys. Seriously. fuck those guys. Yes. Walking around like they own the goddamn place. Oh, cool, you have armor. (laughs) If you didn't have armor, I'd stab you in the neck. All right, keep that energy. <laughs> are, are you guys going to break us out or something? Working on that and she, as she's like looking around. As you guys are planning this and as Trish is thinking this, you hear somebody banging on the, on the, on the bars, the electrocuted bars. <laughs> hey, <laughs> ah, hey, asshole. <laughs> I'm going to open this gate. And you hear some guy in the, up on the top rank. Hey, shut up. Keeps hitting the bar, getting electrocuted. Ah! Oh, oh boy, this is really fueling my fire. You hear the townie just getting like excited and angry from getting electrocuted constantly hitting the bar. The guy's like, hey, stop! Boots running. Jerry. This guy is distracted. 
Give me, let's call it agility lockpick. Yeah, because you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta be quick. DC of one. Got it. Seven success. Jerry looks at this lock. She sees the electricity surging through and decides, I'm gonna fuck it. I have to power through it. Fuck it. Sticks the lockpick in. It's sending like a little bit of jolts through her body, but the gate quietly unlocks. Jerry opens the gate slowly and rounds the corner and sees this soldier, this Brotherhood Knight, looking at the townie and like the townie is getting electrocuted continually. <laughs> Jerry would definitely like jump on him and she's 5'2", so it's, you know, the, like the little backpack, like uh-huh. the wrapping around the neck and wrapping around the waist as much as she can with her legs. <laughs> UFC, UFC style. So this th- this will be more agility, let's call this. I mean, it's got to be agility unarmed, I think. DC of one, let's call it. It's not it's not too difficult. You got to jump on him. For the listeners at home, she has to get an eight. <laughs> not tagged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I have luck. I have so much luck. You can luck. use it to reroll yeah. that 20. Time to use it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a five. That's, that's a success. That's how much luck you got. I got it. <laughs> I'd like to equate this to Jerry runs up, gets them in the position, and puts her weight back to try and bring him down. And he is like a fucking tree. He does not move. He's just like, ah, what are you doing? Ah! And as she's struggling to put him down, the townie reaches through the bars and gives him like an open palm strike <laughs> through the bars <laughs> since he's so close. It <laughs> knocks the wind out enough that Jerry can pull back one more time hit the ground, kind of hurting her back a little, but the impact knocks the wind out of the guy even more so, and you just hear and he stops moving. So Jerry just pulls just that one last time to make sure, and then like pushes him to the side. You've picked the lock once, you can do it again. Okay, let's get you out of there. And right as you say that, the alarm goes off again, and you hear (whistles) whistling sound. Townie looks up, kind of makes a frown. That's not good. And a shell hits the roof of the structure. Hitting the command post room, just exploding. <clears throat> Debris goes flying. The townie and Jerry both hit the ground. The, contr- the control room is gone. The two guys are in there decimated. And as the dust and everything clears, everyone looks at their cell door and it's uh, wide open. The power has knocked out the electric locks. Everything is just wide open there are klaxons going off all around and then you hear at least to sunny the familiar sound of laser fire and bullet fire there is a conflict happening on the base there is smoke there is a little bit of fire at the control center itself there's a huge opening where you can see the night sky now you hear power armor charging up and then more explosions sunny lance trish where are you the three of you from your cells can hear her <laughs> screaming. <laughs> uh, Marcos emerges from his cell. V! V! Uh, from behind Trisha's cell, as you're getting up, Trish, you can hear V like, Mark! Mark! It seems like she she bounced. She left her cell completely. Uh, the group meets up, I would say, and uh, in the section directly closest to Trish and Lance's cell with uh, all three of you there, and then uh, I'm sorry, Jerry shows up with the townie in tow. And all of you kind of look at her like, <laughs> yeah, it's a downy. <laughs> you still have that sword. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, wow. Yeah, okay, all of you are here. No, the, the brother took all my stuff. There's like a storage locker in another room in this building somewhere. It's got all my gear, I assume, probably where yours is. Uh, another explosion goes off nearby. Pow. Oh, he kind of ducks down. Hey, but we should probably get going, huh? I want to make sure Mark and V... Are, are with us. Oh, Mark's right here. No. Oh, Mark, Mark, Marcos and V are not with us? They found each other, and you don't, they're not in front of you. They're not near you. Oh, okay. I guess they left together, <laughs> but we had them. <laughs> Let's go. Can we, can we try and, like, fo- follow them or look for them? Yeah, yeah, easy enough. You guys kind of run together as a group after Jerry's like, well, we, we had them. I don't know. Yeah, we ran. Yeah, we run. The group heads down, and you see Marcos and V kind of just opening these containers, these lockers and containers. Mark is a Latin X or Latinx, however you want to say it, male, approximately twenty. I think I said like twenty-five, twenty-six years old. Uh, he's got kind of a shaved head, very short hair. It's like buzzed almost. 
Uh, he has like the mutton chops, like the, the, the line of it being there. Uh, but it looked kind of fresh, like he shaved everything off, probably at some point before leaving to try and disguise the way he looks. V is kind of a, she's like a mixed, she's like half uh, Asian, uh, Amelia was an Asian woman. Probably about five, three, five, four, very kind of shorter than Marcos. Marcos picks up like a, uh, what's it called, an assault rifle and he kind of like looks at it like, almost as if he knows how to fucking use it. He like loads it up and he's like cocking it back. He sees you guys coming down and he's like, oh, I think your stuff's in here somewhere, but you, I mean, you better make it quick. And you hear another explosion go off, another one. Where are you going to go? North, I guess. I don't know. Can't go to Hollow Lake because you know, they are there. What do you want us to tell your family? Uh, v comes up to, to Sunny. She looks at him in the face and she says, you're, you're the merchant. I, you're, from, you're from First Hill. That's right. Sunny, Sunny Takasi, Sunny Sundries. Yeah, sunny Sundries. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I bought some really nice stationery from you once. Of course you did. I remember you as well. You have that uh, lovelorn look about you. Chuckles a little bit, and as she hands the letters to Sunny, give these to my mom, and let her know that we're safe, or that we'll be safe wherever we're going. Mark kind of speaks up as he has the rifle. I don't know many places north or east of here, but uh, I'm sure we'll find something, someplace safe. Paradise Valley. As for Lila or Heather. They look at each other. Okay. Paradise Valley it is. Townie kind of, kind of slowly comes in between the conversation. Hey, JR, Paradise Valley, you guys looking for merchants and stuff? I have never been up that way. If we were looking for merchants, it'd probably be Sunny. He looks at Sunny. Nice. Fair deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you all find your gear, and the townie finds his, like, a big old duffel bag, and he just, like, straps it on his back, no issue. Then he pulls out a revolver that looks ivory and gold, perfect condition. And it looks like something out of, like, Red Dead, Revolver, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. It's, like, a super customized gun. That is very nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. I found a few pieces here and there. And then he's, like, he looks at Lance. He goes, one second. Has a second bag, goes through it. Chinese officer's sword, and he hands it to Lance. <laughs> <laughs> Free of charge. Lance takes it and never lets go of it. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy, the town, he has cowboy hat, and he's got his cowboy gun, and he's spinning on his hand, puts it in the holster. He's like, well, ready when you guys are. Mark and V, they look at each other, and they look back to the group, and Mark says, we're going to need some cover, if you don't mind. Keep him busy for as long as you can, and we'll head for Paradise Valley. Yeah, we'll try and keep him off you. Go, and uh, if you haven't decided you do want to come back, you're always safe at first hill. He, Mark, puts his hand out to shake Sonny's hand. Shakes his hand. He just looks at Olivia and just, like, does that, like, puts his hand on his shoulder, like, gives her a nod, it's going to be okay, he's got her, got her letters. And as that's going on, Jerry takes out her railway rifle. Tell my sister, Lila, that I always loved her. And that my mom, Heather, that I never meant to say what I did. Mark nods. Will do. Thank you. And then that railway rifle is just, you see the scope. You see it aimed out. And it just like zeroes in on a Brotherhood soldier. Oh, <laughs> starting off violent. I love it. Mark and V take off into the darkness. There, This fight, there are no barriers here. So we can add as many zones as we need to for this. Okay. But we are starting in zone one, which is center outpost wreckage. So the three structures are around the outpost. You came out of one of them. The walls are obliterated right now. There is fighting happening all around you. Sunny would recognize these dark blue, these dark navy blue coats being worn as cause agents. The rest of you would recognize the shiny silver armor of Brotherhood knights and power armor. Some of those knights look like they went into buildings and put on power armor suits. Which buildings? Uh, there are no more suits for you. So, uh, Damn it. Lance, <laughs> What's facing you now, as, as Jerry alluded to, is one Brotherhood knight in full power armor and two knights in combat armor. So, let us begin with the initiative order. Yeah, Lens is the last one. He's 
spending the whole turn learning the blade. <laughs> 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 study the. I study the way of Bushido. Just <laughs> turning it over in his hands, looking at his reflection, his new scar in it, Dude. like. Yes. Katas. Yeah. <laughs> Doing katas. Yeah. The Brotherhood have an initiative of 12. Which means, similar to other battles, they go after everyone except Lance. They go before Lance. <laughs> so you are all in the same zone. You have to at least keep the waves of enemies busy for five rounds. That's when Mark and V will be a safe distance away. Trish, you are starting us off. There are three enemies south of you guys in the same zone. Then I suppose I'm gonna just open fire. Let's get go, the shebang. Let's go, started. bro. Let's, let's fucking do it. <laughs> I learned. I learned this from you, Jamie. <laughs> Nothing to it but to do it. <laughs> Nothing to it but to do fucking it. rage. Um, <laughs> rage, fucking. <laughs> um, okay. That was a nine and an eight. I believe that's a there hit. There we yeah, go. That's a hit. And which one are you shooting at? Um, I'll do not power suit. Gotcha. So there's two. So I'll two. do one of one of the non power suits. Cool, suits. cool, cool. Good shot. Good shot. Go ahead and roll the d24 location, please. Oh, I, yeah, I could just do my center mask because that's kind of my 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 shtick. Nice. So body then. That's a critical hit. Six fucking damage. I feel like we're gonna get a few of those. Looking at Jerry. <laughs> yeah. 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 Her uh, real ray rifle will do it. <laughs> You begin bleeding heavily. At the end of each of your subsequent turns, you suffer two combat damage, physical damage, ignoring all damage resistances. So this little squad runs up. Trish, I would assume, I'm gonna give this one to you. Turn sideways, duster flapping in the the wind caused by all the explosions behind her. Very anime too. I lost my duster. No, you got it back from the the, the gear. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Back. Got it. I'd say that's why you hit this crit and it goes <laughs> bullet time as our camera follows the bullet out of the, the uh, out of the hand cannon. Hits this non-power armored brotherhood, uh, I would call him a scribe, square in the chest. Pfft. He uh, bends down, coughing up blood. Uh, the other one looks at him, has a face of horror, but then the power armor suit kind of pushes the other one forward, like, keep going. Uh, he is critically injured with six damage. Anything else? No, that's going to do it. Two start. It's a good start. That's a, <laughs> that's a pretty start. good start. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. yeah. Jerry! Jerry would take aim at the other. Just because okay. they both take out their guns at the same time. And it's like... Synchronized. Yeah. <laughs> I have to get 13 to hit. You got it. Come on. Easy peasy. That's a 9. Yeah. And a 12. <laughs> you get an action point. There you go. Real, this is the railway rifle, right? Yes. And oh, um, oh, center God, mass. I'm going to activate this. that. To hit the torso. <laughs> yeah. This guy is fucking That's dead. Oh, my I know. Goodness. I learned that from Trish. And I'm going to activate Gunslinger, which activates one more weapon damage. Why not? <laughs> get it. Get it. Get it. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a lot. How many is that? Yes. That's a lot. He looks down at his friend in <laughs> horror and then just gets blasted away. 12. That's 12 damage plus... Okay, so this is over. This You went over his HP. I'll tell you right away. Yeah, and this is debilitating and breaking. This is not debilitating. This is sending him to the grave. This is <laughs> instant death. So, sure. Jerry, she gets down on one knee. And there's a moment where she flinches. Because this is when her knee was torn from her. But even then, she... She steadies herself, and you see the railroad spike come out from the gun. And it hits this guy right in the chest, and he goes to the ground. And then it goes back to Jerry, and she reloads her gun with another railroad spike. Slides right in. I would say the impact of how hard this guy got hit and it went through him. Did that thing where like the force propels him backwards. Like he's trying to run. But there's just so much force behind this thing being launched across the field that it goes, as it goes through him, he does like the, uh, flies back. Fatality, instant fatality. The townie goes up next to her, next to Jerry. Wow, that's really impressive. (laughs) Okay. And he switches hands. I'll make it challenging. I'll shoot with my left hand. And he'll shoot at the Brotherhood in uh, armor here. That is two hits. 
Uh, five combat dice of damage. We're looking at six energy damage. Two effects. What the kind of gun does he have? This cowboy pistol. It's that cool yeah. As he shoots it, green energy comes out of it. It's not a. It's, oh. it's not a. It's not a regular gun. Cool. Piercing. Yeah. So it goes straight through the paladin. Yes. Eight energy resists. So just one damage. Far armors. They're they're no joke. <laughs> right. Yep. So he hits him. You see some of it sizzle as the power armor continues walking. Towny kind of tilts his head. Unexpected, but you know, we will work with that. And he nods. Sonny, you're up. Sonny, his suit coat now opening, flapping in the breeze of the night air in this uh, thing. is like, I've been looking to get some payback on these bastards for a long time. Um, and I'm going to aim my oh. 44 and I'm going to I'm going to call and try and hit the head. Okay, so of, you increase the difficulty by one, right? So yeah, that's two. Okay. Of the uh, paladin. I'm going to use one of our action points here. I got to get 13 or lower on two of these dice. Come on, baby. Got one. Okay, going to roll one more. Come on. There oh! we go. A two. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's nine damage. You shoot at the head. Call the shot. Clear. <laughs> uh, he has damage resistance seven. So two goes through it gives him a good it gives him a good bonk yeah yeah he's like Ugh. he gets a good he gets his bell rung the it happened i mean it, it you guys are chipping away it's happening he's gonna continue walking and it is his turn ah uh, he's not fond of ghouls at all he's about to be even less fond of them <laughs> <laughs> he's just gonna physically he's gonna do physical strike one success five combat dice of physical damage Okay, one damage and effect, no effect, but it's just one physical damage to the bottom. With his free hand, he just kind of cocks it back and it like uh, mechanically releases. <laughs> so that's only one damage resistance. Uh, so I think I think I do negate it. Yeah, though, you right? negate it. Yeah. Okay. So maybe there's like a piston or something misfires and just like stops short, and the guy looks down at the suit. Uh, and you thank your lucky stars that you have one damage resistance, even though I can't. I can't logically think of a way where the punch doesn't hurt you, so I'm just saying that. Like, I like the fist stopping, yeah. He, yeah. yeah, he looks up and goes, must be my sunny disposition. <laughs> Cocks the you gun just, in his face. <laughs> you hear it through the mask, shut the fuck up, cool. Lance, this uh, power armor is in front of Sunny. Yeah, okay, so he's kind of like in the back still, just like looking at the sword, finishing getting ready when like everything blew up and started happening. He turns around and sees all the commotion, sees Sunny get punched. And so instantly he rushes towards Sonny and the armored guy. Yes. Sonny, move! Yeah, he's gonna go with a punching glove. <laughs> keeping the sword in the other hand. Uh, and, because I have adrenaline rush, I'm back at 10, so I need to hit 16 to hit the guy. Oh. <laughs> that is uh, four successes. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Ooh, we got five action points. Okay, I'm gonna roll the damage for the punching glove. That's one, two, three effects. Three damage, three effects. So that means they ignores three because it's piercing and stun. So stun applies oh my God. and piercing three for three damage. So three damage go through. Full three and damage. I'm just going to roll for where it is. Twelve. Please be the head. It's not the head. No, I think that's like an arm. It's never the head. But I'm going to use two action points from our five to come at him with the sword on <laughs> the other hand. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Kind of like try to lodge it somewhere. Go for it. Uh, but this is a much... It's not 16. It's going to be... I need to hit 10 because I have zero <laughs> melee weapon. <laughs> oh, we're so 11 and 12. Close. So the glove goes... I, I assume the 12 is like an arm, right? I don't, I didn't 12 know is right arm. Right arm. Yeah, right arm. Gotcha. Thank you. So a right hook to the right arm. Damages some of the armor. Everyone, you can hear this the suit kind of cave in under the weight uh, and then Lance has the sword flips it around tries to stab and misses but the stun does apply so he's stunned uh, stunned is I cannot use my regular actions without using action points I believe exactly yeah. okay well you have plenty of uh, those <laughs> and it's the end of the first round you guys are doing so good this brotherhood yeah. squad looks outnumbered things the scribe takes two damage oh right? shit <laughs> Oh yeah, the bleeding scribe didn't 
didn't act, right? Because he's bleeding? Well, that's my fault. It's okay. Because things are going to get worse. It's going to get better. <laughs> On the battlefield, I'd say from behind you, you hear the Washington Post march playing. That's that song. The a floating iBot. And it looks around, goes to Trish, and detonates. Oh no! <laughs> Fuck! No! <laughs> Uh, that's a four, so that hits. I knew this would happen. <laughs> <laughs> two damage with two effects, so piercing, so additional two. Or not piercing, sorry, vicious. So four damage to Trish, please. On the left leg. And from behind you, three men in navy blue dark trench coats emerge with their rifles out. The cause. The cause will go after the Brotherhood. We're good with the cause, right? Yeah. Top of the round, Trish. I'm sh- I'm shooting at um, the other unarmed or unsuited Brotherhood guy. The scribe. Pocket sevens. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> An action point for the party. Damage, and it is. That is more than three. Oh my uh, god. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even bother counting it up. <laughs> you, you see the you see the pores on this unarmored scribe's face as you pull the trigger back in his head, just bloody messes all over the place. Love it. You have about three other guys behind you, by the way. I would assume Trish turns to address that at the end of her turn. Yes. Okay. Jerry! There is a power armored individual fighting Lance and Sunny. And then there are there was a robot just blew up behind Trish, and there's three guys following after that uh, that robot self destructed. Jerry will put her scope, like look through it, and then the railway spike shoots out. Who are you aiming for? For the one engaged with okay. Lance and Sunny. Here we go. True Big test. Boy. Big boy. Railway rifle versus power armor. Which <laughs> one is stronger? <laughs> we'll see. Let's go. Immovable object versus <laughs> unstoppable force. Yeah, we got all the action points. You though. do. You have four action points, by the way. We need to find a nickname for that gun. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Ooh. There we go. That's a crit. That's respect a- that a crit. So you get additional. I guess we know what wins. <laughs> Just saying. Now the damage, please. How many action points does that generate? One. I'm gonna use that right away. Fast shot. You may take a second major action in combat to make a ranged attack. The additional major action only costs one AP. One more again. Oh, what <laughs> is happening? That's a one. That's another crit. Respect. Put respect on that one crit. one d20 too? Okay. Yeah. So what? let me just explain the amount of damage I do. It's 22. I'm writing this in my notes. Susan rolls twenty-two combat die. Okay, I need you to roll where you hit it because I don't. I don't. Torso, torso. She has center mass. Oh, center mass. mass. <laughs> she has <Fuck>. center <laughs> mass. <laughs> All right. So his torso only has nine. Hey Jerry, look at this cool sword. <laughs> nine physical. It only has nine physical damage resists. Right? Okay, but so let, let me just it's finish. Ignored. Oh, there's more. Yeah. So the first. So the first one is. Nine damage. Nine damage, thank you. Oh my god, this he's not gonna live. There's no way he's gonna survive this. Okay. And the second shot is what? I think it's eight. From the moment this fight began, it's the part in the movie where you just hear the blaring rock music <laughs> and the main characters just fucking destroy. Yeah. It's, it's I'm, counting, I'm counting eight. I'm counting I, eight. I count, eight damage? I count eight, like One, two. One, two, th- yeah, I see two, eight. two effects. So it doesn't matter because his damage resist is only three. He only had four health left. So, there we go. The first shot <laughs> catches him off guard. <laughs> you see pieces, the force of this railroad spike rips pieces of the power armor off of like one of his sides. He's like, oh! He looks up, and the second one is already mid flight as Jerry loaded the second one and fired. And it goes right into the spot where the armor's missing. And I'd say it comes clear, like not all the way out, but like halfway out of the other side of him. And he's just yeah, like uh, danced the armor. And he's like, yeah, he's trying to move. Uh, and for some reason, it's like you rip, 
you probably hit him right in the spine too like so he's lost the ability to move his lower body but the suit is still stationary it's still upright and he's like oh oh lance and sunny just see the upper half of this uh brotherhood of steel power armor just i slouch point to jerry and go promotion (laughs) (laughs) you get a raise i'm gonna say jerry your turn's over (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. The town he turns around. I can see this side's covered. And he <laughs> fires <laughs> at the cause behind him. Uh, 16 and a 17. Unfortunately, Mr. Town, he's a miss as he fires another energy bolt. The cause, a little more nimble than the Brotherhood agents, are able to kind of move out of the way and dodge. Uh, Sunny, you're up. Oh, man. I'm. Sunny's kind of conflicted about this. He's gonna. Well, he's. I gotta take a minor action, and and he's gonna shove a stim pack in his body. So he just sticks it in. Needle stays in, and then he looks around and he sees the cause, and he sees that they're like shooting us and like shooting everyone. But this is not like a good time to be like, hey, stop shooting. Uh, so he's gonna try and like aim. I'm gonna shoot for their arms. I'm gonna try and wound them and not. You've been kill calling them. the shots too. I like this. Yeah. I like this, Sonny. He's like tactically calling shots. Okay, so that's DC of two. DC two. Uh, I gotta hit a. My thing is eight and five. Thirteen. So thirteen on these two. Here we go. Double twos, baby. Double deuces. <laughs> what? What? Pocket and twos. Those are tag skill crits. So that's oh my God. You're at two six. action points. No, you're at six. You can have no more. None. No, you can have no more. Seven. We can have seven. we can have seven because I have a shut perk. up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's use them it. all, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so you have seven. You have seven. I've never seen you guys have this many action points. This is terrifying. Neither have I. Seeing this, the last this sea of red caps. Okay, so I'm gonna roll damage here, so that's six damage that includes the uh, effects. Vicious. They have physical uh, damage resist one on arms, but I mean, five still goes through. And we'll say that uh, we'll say that's the right arm. So that's a that's a critical hit. Still five damage still on the arm. Right. Arm. You drop any object held in the hand. Okay. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I'm trying to knock the gun out of their hand. Yeah. Dropped his rifle because it's two-handed weapon. Okay. Cool. How many points is it to do another two? Shoot again. Yeah. How much is it? Is it two? Two. Yeah. Two. But I think the I believe the DC goes up by one, so this is still gonna be two. Yeah. So I'll I'll spend another one to get uh, another die here. You have four left. Good. Good. Oh my god. All there right. Go. Boom. Generate- that's three, eight, and four. Yeah. So two that's two more. Oh tagged? Jesus. Is it tagged? Those are tagged. So yeah, we. So that's five successes. We have full action. Po- we have yeah, seven. Full again. Points. Oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> um, I do. <laughs> I do awesome. have to Amazing. roll for for this. So roll for yeah. the body. That's eight. Uh, I think that's left arm. Maybe right. It I is the chart. torso. Ooh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is only three damage in total. They have damage resist of one on torso, but still two damage is nothing to scoff at. This guy is, he gets shot twice as one cause agent. He's just like, oh, 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 bleeding out, uh, trying to pick up his gun with his non-broken arm. Uh, but yeah, that's a hell of a turn, Sonny. That's it, yeah. He's, he just pop, pop. He's like trying to hit the shoulder, and I guess he gets into the torso a little bit, but makes him drop his gun. That's all that matters. Brotherhood have no troops on the field currently, so we skip their turn. The cause agents. One of them takes aim at Sunny. Why? Fuck you. <laughs> because he's shooting at them. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Uh, that's fair. I guess that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I got an eight and I got a complication. I got a twenty. So seven with three effect. The effect is piercing. Right leg. Ooh. Ouch. That's where Jerry's very much. <laughs> Seven damage to the right leg. I take seven damage. I I only have one uh, physical resistance on on the leg, so. God, okay, so it doesn't work in this instance. Seven damage to the right leg. I believe that's a critical injury, which means you are unable to move. Okay. You immediately fall prone as your leg gives out under your the weight. You no longer take the sprint action, and the move action is now a major action for you. Got it. So there is no running away for Sunny. The other cause member sees. Who do you see next? Uh, the townie shot at them, so I think I'll shoot at the townie next. Uh, 17 and a 16 are misses. They are very much misses. 
I would say the third one is the one who uh, has a broken arm, so he wastes his turn getting the gun, picking it up, realizing he can't fire the hunting rifle one arm, so he's just fumbling with his gun. He can't do it, so he just drops it on the ground. Lance! Uh, Lance jumps down to uh, Sunny, drops the sword on the ground, reaches for his uh, med pack, and goes like immediately for the leg and like uh, just stops the bleeding, does first aid on him. I'm gonna do a tree uh, heal HP on Sunny. With a difficulty equal to the number of injuries the patient has. One injury. He only has one. So just one. Okay. Okay, cool. I'm gonna use one action point because we have so many. I need to hit Medicine 6 plus Intelligence 8, 14. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Is that three HP? Three successes. Beautiful. Three successes. Uh, six. Uh, medicine is six, so you heal six HP. Oh my god. <laughs> You're a lifesaver, Lance. Almost all the damage done is recouped. Mm-hmm. Wow. Can I, can I spend two action points to use first aid again? Yes. Can I do two first aid? Let's aid do one it. Round? Yeah. Fuck it. I'm going to treat that injury. Yeah. Okay. Woo. Oh my god. So spend two action points. Uh, now the yeah, difficulty check is still one. The difficulty goes up when you do another action. Oh, right. Okay, two. Okay, so can I take another action point? To, uh, to get the yeah, dice. Yeah, you got five of them. Yeah, use them. Thank you. Okay. Uh, roll this. Oh, oh my oh. god. Three Tag more skill. successes. <laughs> Tag skill, that's five successes. Five successes. It's free. So, Take it. Yeah, you get it back. So, wow, cool. Okay. All your action points are back. <laughs> <laughs> God I feel damn like it. you're like secretly so pissed. <laughs> like, he, he, like <laughs> he just, he's got his tweezers, like immediately sees the bullet, takes it out. You don't even feel it. And then like he like quickly with his head like ducked to avoid the, the, the fire going over his head. He like quickly wraps and makes a really tight knot. Like, and he uh, taps you on the cheek and says, keep shooting. End of the second round. Okay, Jerry, do me a favor. Pick a number. One, two, or three? Two. As you are preparing to fight the cause, you turn around and you see a squad of Brotherhood scribes come out, coming up the hill, marching. Come on, get them! As they run up, it's they're like, if you imagine the way a cemetery looks, you know they have the paved roads and they have like sewer drains for the water to drain down, right? As the five of them are marching, two sewer drains on the side of the road that they're marching on pop off and explode. Fleshy tentacles <laughs> emerge from the drains. Oh no! <laughs> five of them emerge and grab all five of the Brotherhood scribes, having them up in the air and pulling them down into the drain. It's a very small space, so it basically just breaks pieces of them off. And, oh god! No! Oh no. The road underneath, the, 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 the paved road where these sewer drains are, begins to rise, like crack up and erupt. Or before you fought a Wailing One, this is a portion of the Wailing Wall itself. Oh. It has traveled all the way. <laughs> oh, shit. It wasn't the whole thing. No, the Wailing Wall wasn't just not. the dude. Oh my. This is good. The lower half of the map, as the rounds continue, will become absorbed by the Wailing Wall. Shit! Where's that? Where's that vertebrate? <laughs> You'll have to continue moving north, or yeah, or find a way out of here because <laughs> this zone, at one point or another, will become engulfed in the Wailing Wall. I'm real glad you healed that injury. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my pleasure. Yeah. I would have sucked. <laughs> if you can imagine a just a ball, a mass of flesh and tendrils and mouth chittering and speaking out not in your minds but out loud this time and the word all these different voices and mouths are wailing and, and crying out is revenge revenge over and over again let's so, get out of here no more brotherhood on the map <laughs> only the wailing wall Top of the round, Trish. Two more rounds and uh, <sighs> GTFO. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, without being meta, but this seems above our heads. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Lance has a sword now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nothing can ready. stop him. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say, Trish was taking uh, aim 
um, as these giant tentacles were, were pulling up the Brotherhood. And one probably was even thrown, you know, over her head on its way through the tunnel. Sure. Trish is going to quickly look towards her party member friends. She's going to yell out, We have to get out of here! Tony nods. He looks to, he just looks to you. I'm deferring to you guys on this one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's roll. Tactically, uh, we're, what's the best way out of here? Back north. Back. Boom. Let's go. Trish, as you begin running north, you see that you're leaving the section of the uh, of the outpost. You're going now to what I'm going to call the kill box. As you run past the northern section of the outpost, you are stopped because you hear <laughs> shelling continuing from Holler Lake towards the front of the outpost. So you're safe from the creature, but now you're going to have to survive. I'm glad that it gets easier in the uh, kill box. <laughs> So. Yeah, you have to survive a hostile area. Uh, so that is your that's your turn, I assume, right? You moved. Yes, I'll do whatever assist I can. Gotcha, Jerry. You're up. Uh, the Wailing Wall is now here and back, and he is. You think this thing can't remember me? One of the mouths. Jerry. So cinematically, you see the scope, and then she's aiming the scope like she's looking for another target. She. Here's her friends behind her. She like turns 180 and then she sees this tentacled monster shoot up from the ground. The cause running away. You see Jerry put the gun on her back and start running. Jerry takes off. You make it to the next. You're not engaged with any cause agents. So you make it up to where Trish is. And that's when you kind of like grab each other like, oh, cool. I made it. And you look and now you see the shelling that's continually coming from Holler Lake. So the next section of this road is just... Hazard. Continual hazard. Uh, that's it for Jerry, I assume? Yes. Townie runs. Not only that, but he is going to provide covering fire as he makes it to the end. I will say that he'll give assistance to, I think, Sonny and Lance are currently in. Or no, no he's engaged with one of the cause agents. Huh, dodging one of the cause. I like, I, I'm going to go feed off what Jerry said. The cause agents are a little distracted, causing this. The me- can't story wise, why they're not actively engaging. They're like, what the fuck is this thing? Sonny, you're up. I'm going to follow Trisha's directions and run over there. I, I, I think, like, in turn-wise, we're, we're going in turn order because we're in structured time, but I'm definitely, like, with Lance. Like, we're we're together since he healed me up, so we're, like, moving together. Okay. If Lance is running, I guess. <laughs> if Lance decides to run, yeah. uh, yeah, then we will be run? moving yeah. as a unit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if not... Um, unless something... Unless I get grabbed by a tentacle, I'm going to be running <laughs> and supporting yeah. you, helping you yeah. run. And to the to the cause, like if there's some someone near us, or if they're like looking at gas, I just go run. Yeah, there's one guy for sure, just like panicking. It's the one who dropped like the gun. He's like trying to pick it up, ah! and his, his arm is broken. And you just like run past him, run. And he looks at you like scared, like you just broke my arm with a bullet. Like, <laughs> this is the one time where I'm sad that Lance is last because next is the Wailing Wall, and he's going to engulf the begin to engulf the zone, just growing and growing. I'm going to need Lance. So yeah, my foot, like, I try to start running with Sunny, yeah. but my foot is, like, already engulfed. Mm-hmm. Athletic yeah. strength check, please. Oh, you're good at that. Point. Yes. DC one. DC one for now. It's not that. It's not huge yet. I need to hit uh, 13. I spend one action point. Okay. Spend one. <gasps> oh, hey, I hit 13. You did. You did. You got a, you got a 12. Ooh. That's a 20. You I also got, got a 20. Compared. Yeah. Hey, Lance. Yeah, you I, make it. I got... You make I it. I got two luck points, but I'm not going to use okay. them. I want to see the complication you of make this. It. You make it across. You make it out of there. The complication is that the Wailing Wall grows now. It engulfs the zone, as opposed to doing it at the end, at the start of its next turn. It's going to do it now. And those cause agents are swapped instantly. Just, as it tries to get you, you kind of just get out of there. And out of sheer frustration, it just opens all of its mouths again. Revenge! And all the tentacles shoot out kind of like a fucking Elden Ring boss that has a stupid bullshit move. They'll just attack every <laughs> habitable space in the near area and like instead of being tentacles, they are sharpened, sharp-edged uh, like pseudopods. 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 Nice. That's the word. And they shoot out. And cause agents are just peppered with these tentacles or these pseudopods shooting straight through them. And it, it enhances in size and absorbs them to the point where 
I think as all of you look back, you see one of them reach out towards you like, Oh, hell! And as he's just engulfed, his face becomes part of this wall. It's just forever stuck as this pink fleshy silhouette of what it once was, uh, frozen in place. Trish, pick one or three. Three, because it looks like a butt. <laughs> <laughs> is it a is it a giant butt? Is it a radioactive butt? <laughs> you're it, you're gonna wish. <laughs> there are some trees to the right of this starting line of the bombardment field, the kill box, and they begin to crack like something large is in them. <laughs> Breaking down. You hear a roar. <laughs> Scale tail flips around. Why? The what? death claw, which what picked up your scent, Why? has finally caught up to you. <laughs> this is season finale. We have not been renewed another season. <laughs> it's the goddamn boss rush, is what it is. It's the boss rush. But this is also where where Bear and Emmett come save us. <laughs> Trish, you are up. There is danger behind you and to your right, and on the path you have to take to the front. Crossing this field is going to be. I would say either agility athletics or strength athletics. I would love to do agility. It's a DC of two. Because it is an active field being bombarded by Holler Lake, a.k.a. the Cause Stronghold. How many extra points do we have? Six. Six? Okay, I will use one. Boop. One used. I need a ten. <laughs> <gasps> These are fun. These are fun. Two complications. You yell to the team, come on! Like Kare Munde in fucking Revenge of the Sith. Come on! Charging with your troops. You make it across this zone. Not easily. Skillfully. There's nothing easy about this. This is just Trish showing off her tactical maneuvering and understanding of an active battlefield, trusting on her instincts and everything she's learned up until this point. The culmination of her service with the NCR is this moment as she crosses a field looking like a goddamn American hero. Reaching the other Saving side. Saving Private Ryan, motherfucker. <laughs> bombardments going off. If our camera could, it pans to the active artillerymen of the cause in Holler Lake. And they're yelling at each other, What the fuck is this lady doing? Is she Brotherhood? I don't know. Keep shooting. And they're trying. To, and they miss again and again. Oh, God. And they see that she's not even coming towards Holler Lake. She's going a little bit to the east, away from the settlement itself. And they breathe a sigh of relief as they continue bombarding <laughs> the the field and the base itself. Jerry, athletics strength or athletics agility? Completely up to you. I will use an action point. Doesn't get any of them. <sighs> oh, dang. <laughs> 11, 11, and 13. Our dear old Jerry Bear makes it about halfway through the field when one of the shells goes off near her. Bah! I wouldn't say it kills you or does damage, but it does knock you prone. And I'm going to throw in one of the two complications I was given earlier. Jerry goes to get up, and as she gets up, you see another a few cause members are coming out from the base, and they have their guns drawn. They're going to try to stop you. Uh, when it's your turn, you'll have to choose to dodge them or fight them, either way. So we'll get to that when it is your turn. The Death Claw takes its turn now, and the scent, the scent it remembers the most, the tastiest clean and pure blood flesh and human that vault dweller damn he seems so goddamn delicious i thought it would have been so moves no absolutely not tainted meat absolutely not having that (laughs) well i'm next to you so (laughs) (laughs) why you gotta smell so good it is gonna slam body hey sir yes lance turns around and as he sees that claw coming at him he puts the sword in front of him sideways and try to deflect. I'm going to use the parry quality of the sword. <laughs> I'm going to spend an action point to increase okay. the DC to two instead of one. Got it. Okay. Target number is six. He's not very good. Oh, what? Yeah. 12 and a 17. This thing launches itself at Lance and like a Super Smash Brothers melee character with a sword. <laughs> Counter. <laughs> Just <laughs> uses an Ike- an, a, a martial arts maneuver he learned from the vault to use its weight against him. And it goes right past. I'd say it goes into the into the uh, artillery field. So same zone as Jerry. However, it's not near her per se, but it's there. The townie 
will use an ability called Luck of the Draw. I've designed it myself. I thought it's named after a similar ability, but I found that afterwards. Basically, he spends one luck point to succeed any check he wants. He'll spend one of his two luck points and he will just, <laughs> just <laughs> explode across. Explosions around him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's just strolling across and he's like, whoop. Uh, Sunny, it's your turn. Uh, Deathclaw is in the middle of the field. I mean, we gotta go. We gotta, we gotta just go. Yeah. We gotta just go, I think. This is how we gotta do this. So, yeah, I'm gonna go. Away from the death claw. <laughs> yeah. I'd say he's too preoccupied. He just got parried. He doesn't understand what's happening. He's like, I'm attacking. Are you using strength or agility plus athletics? I'd like to use agility, please. You got it. And you have two. I'm going to have to buy an action point because I have I have zero athletics. So I got to hit two eight on three dice. Here we go. Let's go. Oh, That's I one. got one. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> Critical success. I'll even do you one better with that crit. You get halfway through the field and you see Jerry. You're able to, I would say, pick her up by one of her heavy coats and hold her like you would uh, a grocery bag. Because of her <laughs> do it. Weight. I'm fine. Do it. <laughs> I'm trying to pick you up. We both have injured legs now. Yeah, so we're right like, legs. Tra- like dragging each other. Yeah. The death claw is like trying to get up, but the constant shelling is like ugh, knocking its equilibrium off balance, and it like slashes out. It can't quite reach you. Uh, yeah, you carry her to zone four, where Trish is waiting. Ah, the wailing wall encroaches. Lance, you're the only one left back there. Either strength, athletics, or endurance, survival. Uh, strength, athletics, please. DC of one for this part. Uh, do we have action points? Yeah. We have two. Okay, I'm going to use one, and I need to hit 13. Oh, and you generate one more. Nice. Uh, tag skill, but it's three, so just one more. Easy. A tentacle shoots out, and you, you recognize the movements, and you kind of just block it with the sword, and you're like, wow, this is way easier with the sword. <laughs> Uh, the Wailing Wall. You can see it's now it's got multiple mouths and has gained some size and some height and just mouth. That's its turn as it begins to encroach. I say it forces you to move into the artillery shell zone. So you are in zone three by force as zone two is now gone completely. We are at the next round. This is round five. You have bought enough time or V and Mark to make it to where they need to get out of the evergreen. I hope they're not having to run from this wall and like, death we look class. back, they're <laughs> inside it. We yeah. just look back, their faces are like... Yeah. Part of <laughs> oh, ah, shit. Aww. Whatever. We tried. <laughs> yeah, we got, we got the letters. We got the letters. Yeah. We'll say they're fine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so dark. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're totally good. On the eastern edge of Holler Lake, there's this little, like, a, I would call it a campground of some kind. Trish, Sunny, and Jerry are there. They're, like, resting at, like, a park bench nearby. They're headed by some some down trees. You're able to see what's happening as Lance is in the middle of this artillery field getting shelled. Uh, there's a death claw on one side. There is a m- massive wall of flesh moving. And... As Lance gets the sword and glove ready in each hand, looking like fucking Evil Dead, uh, ready to fight this thing, bottles are gonna go flying at the wall, shattering an impact. Fire spreads, this thing begins to retreat. The Death Clock gets up to try and do something, and sniper rifle fire emerges from multiple spots in the trees for the Death Clock first to emerge from the fire. The Death Clock is getting knocked to and fro. It sees this and tries to move forward, but it's shot multiple times in the face by multiple sniper rifle shots. The Death Claw kind of snarls, wipes this blood from its face. Its scale still intact, but is taking damage and wounds. It judges the situation and decides, I'm out of here, and slithers across the opposite end of the field into the debris of urban decay and wilderness, which has overgrown it in the streets of Northern Evergreen. Lance looks behind him to where the Molotovs are coming from. The shelling has stopped completely. Standing behind Lance are three familiar faces. Adorn in what looks like new and enhanced Vault 6 rat gear. Brock and his other (gasps) two friends Brock have Molotov cocktails. They have hunting rifles and they're firing at this wall. You hear Brock yelling at the dude, kill it! 
You hear his the the smaller of the rat whose name eludes me, Tuco. 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 Holy shit! And he's just firing as much as fast as he can. Uh, fill up the older gentleman. It's like ah, firing with the ten millimeter pistol as fast as he can. They get up to where Lance is as this wall is being pushed back. Brock bends down to Lance. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. What the hell are you doing here? The Island Town intercepted a message that uh, the cause was doing some things up here, and I I just had a feeling that. Uh, I don't know that you'd be up here. Uh, sh- shut up. I regret everything I told you. You're my hero. You're still my hero. Uh, forever and ever more. Uh, don't stay here. There's explosions all around. He looks back. Oh, no, we took care of that. And as you look back to the gates of Holler Lake, you see Island Town security with some other Vault 6 rats uh, having guns pointed at some of the men manning the artillery. They have their hands up. Amongst the crowd, I would say that from his position, Sonny can see the uh, Vault 6 rats and Island Town security basically rounding up the cause members. You see a familiar bald liver spotted head and glasses of one of the cause's le- lieutenants, Brian, has his hand behind his head in his dirt, now dirty and soot filled navy blue, dark blue trench coat. To your left, to the party's left, out of the forest, uh, three, but look like. Similarly dressed to Jerry, hunters emerge wearing like multiple layers of clothing and they have these really gnarly looking pipe bolt rifles. So it looks like Jerry's pipe gun, but way more sophisticated. Uh, they're firing at the death closet, continues to run away. One of the men approaches the party sitting in this or hiding in this little area, this clearing. And he looks around, he sees Jerry and he takes off his mask. Uh, it's one of the Paradise Valley security or Paradise Valley hunters. <laughs> And he looks right at you. He's like, Jerry! What the hell are you doing here? We didn't volunteer for this. This was uh, the council, which your mom is a part of now, told us to come find you. Uh, We left not too long ago, and we ran into this. Uh, Looks like you're doing okay for yourself. You didn't get that far, but... My mom's on the council? Yeah, yeah, it was a bit of a shakeup after you left. Uh... You know, there's been a lot of changes. We're just here to pick you up and to head back. That's it. Jerry does this thing that I'm doing. Looks to the left and the right and, like, you know, that, like, assessing, like, what the hell's going on? Like, no, you're not here to pick me up. That's not what's happening. Look, they sent us to come get you. If we go back without you, we're in trouble. And you know trouble in the tribe means... Shit work for a very long time. I'm too old to be cleaning fucking shitholes, okay? That, that's that's not my gig anymore, all right? Jerry, like, puts her hand on her head like I'm doing and, like, rubs her temples and is like, I was planning on coming back, but now that you're making me go back, I don't want to. <laughs> he nods. Okay, yeah, I get it. Okay, look. When can we expect you? Whenever I want to go typical and i should have known okay (laughs) he turns about all right boys pack it up after some time the wailing wall will be pushed back as the island town security and the remaining vault six rats a brand new batch of rats by the way who were probably sent out after lance was continue exhausting their weaponry uh the thing retreats back down into a much the the large hole it created just slithers away back down you can see it was badly damaged from the assault by multiple fronts pieces of flesh are still lying about and you see uh some of the island town security guys who came up here to volunteer are lighting it on fire with the remnants of the molotov cocktails lighting on fire so it burns uh they are leaving no piece unburnt it is still i would say maybe it's about it's getting to dawn now time has passed The party, the Vault 6 Rats, the Island Town Security, and I would even say the Paradise Valley guys are still now in Holler Lake proper, where multiple cause members have been apprehended. And everyone is at a loss, a decision to make. What do we do with these cause members? The Vault 6 Rats, represented by Brock, state that proper order and justice needs to be served. They should be given to Brotherhood. Island Town Security, on the other hand, says uh, they should be sent back to their own people, just banished from here, from the Evergreen proper. Paradise Valley 
N uh, abstains. We don't have it. We don't care. We don't give a fuck about these guys. We don't give a shit. And then most, if not all of them, kind of turn to you. You are a group here also represented. You have fought them. What do you do with these? A substantial number of cause agents led by a one Brian. <laughs> <laughs> we shoot them all with railroad spikes. Yeah, I only got <laughs> six. Three. Three left? Yeah. I'm kidding. Three okay. left? Yeah. Okay, pick, choose three. <laughs> but honestly, I think Jerry would look towards Sonny. Yeah. He has the strongest opinions about this. And Jerry has no experience with brotherhood or cause so mm -hmm. except for tonight yeah. this was her first time yeah, yeah. I think Sonny approaches or like he's talking with everyone and he and as they're like discussing this and he he goes up to to Brian if you had brotherhood captures what would you do in this situation the liver spotted bald head of Brian raises to meet Sonny's eyes his glass is clearly cracked as he attempts to adjust them, but his hands are tied in front of him, so he has to move his hands down. He has to move his head down to adjust his glasses with his hands. He looks Sunny dead in the eyes. We wouldn't do them any favors. We'd make sure that the lands uh, were a little less heavy under their iron boots, so to speak. Yeah, but the way you do it, you don't care about the people of the Evergreen. I'm not sure what your motivations are anymore. I got no love for the Brotherhood. Tuh, he spits on the ground. That's too. <laughs> oh. But what you fail to see, like how they fail to see, is that these are all people. And he like gestures to everyone. He's like gesturing to everyone here. He gestures to the people that got caught He's like, we're all humans. They're neighbors and partners. They're sisters and brothers. They're friends and companions. And most importantly, they're employees. And I have a commitment to my employees. And then you see, like... You see it hit Sonny finally like, yes, I should not be exploiting these people. <laughs> 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 and he's like, huh, yeah, we're all people trying to survive in the Evergreen, just like you. So I don't think we ought to give you to the Brotherhood. But I don't want to see you in our community anymore. You gotta go. You can fight the Brotherhood, you can do whatever you want. But stay out of First Hill. Stay out of the Evergreen. A lot of the other cause members who are locked up, you hear them kind of mumbling, oh yeah, I'm getting the fuck out of here, I'm quitting. Like, you hear them talking amongst themselves, like, if I, if I get out, I'm out, I'm done, fuck this. And Brian kind of snickers at them. Cowards. All of you cowards! Our message, our motives are just... And as he continues speaking, one of the uh, Paradise Valley hunters kind of goes up to him and just punches him in the face. Poof! Cracks his knuckle a little. Ah, you know, these guys, they talk a lot. We can take him up to the woods and get rid of him for you if you want. Not all of them. This guy. He point to Brian. Jerry walks up, actually. Next to Sonny. I could take care of him. No. No. We're never going to get real justice for Garfield. And there's already been enough bloodshed. We don't need them to fight the Brotherhood. Just drop him off somewhere. Let the Wasteland have him. How about you drop him off in the Wilderness Preserve? That's a good idea. He looks at the other two hunters. You could drop him off somewhere in the north. They kind of nod, like chuckling to each other. Yeah, give them a hard time. They they nod. Uh, the Vault 6 rats and the island town security unlock the handcuffs of the others, obviously taking their weapons and their coats, and put them in a pile 
And they just say, Brock is the one who says, You heard Sonny. You're free to go. And they look at each other. Go where? Brock shakes his head. <laughs> don't know. Don't care. Just don't show up in Island Town, First Hill, or any other big settlement out here in the Evergreen. Keep your noses clean. Or we'll show up again. And this time there won't be this ghoul to help you out and tell us to spare your lives. And they all look at each other and up to Sonny and then one of the former cause agents kind of just bows. Hey, yeah, hey thanks, Sonny. Yeah, real nice of you. And runs. He fucking bolts. And the others do the same. Oh, thank you, Mr. Sonny. Thanks. All of them just thanking you continuously and running across the destroyed field where there's like a... I would say there's a couple of Brotherhood Knights dead out there. There's some scribes. All the remnants of Brotherhood have either killed or fled the battle. Uh, as soon as the flesh wall showed up and it began to swallow multiple buildings. Dang, I'm losing so many potential customers. <laughs> are you kidding? These are going to be loyal customers. <laughs> well, they just can't show up in any of the major yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, You're going to have to start expending. Do you offer shipping or... <laughs> The gar, the uh, Paradise Valley Hunters, as they're called, bid goodbye to Jerry. They tell them, they tell her, "We'll tell the council and your mom, you're safe and sound and doing really well." I would say, and tell me if I'm incorrect in assuming this. Jerry would inform them, "Hey, there's a couple that's going to show up. Take care yes. of them. Treat them nice. I send them okay. your way." They acknowledge and they leave. The rats, led by Brock talk with Lance for probably I would say the rest of the night. Most I'd say everyone stays in Holler Lake because it's now mostly abandoned. The couple who took care of you, Jerry, were nowhere to be found. They fled. They fled the battle. So Lance, everyone is, you know, it's morning, everyone's trying to get some rest, even though it's really early in the morning. And Brock is and Brock, Philip, and Tuco are with you in, in some living room somewhere in one of these homes. And Brock would extend something to you and offer. He would say, look, you did from what I hear, a hell of a job. Uh, St. Mark's alone warrants you, like, I mean, sainthood, like what we learned about in the vault. I think you do some good out here. A lot of good. You should stay out here. Not just, tr you know, not for any of the bullshit reasons we talked about, you know, laying down roots or being a local doctor. No, 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 no. You're bigger than that, Lance. Tuco pass up. Yeah, you're you're bigger than all of us. Literally and metaphorically. Philip kind of scoffs. Do you know what that word means? I mean, yeah, we've done we've done some some pretty big good out here. But I mean, I've been thinking about our last discussion before I left. And there's so much that happened after that. Uh I don't know where to begin, but I think I want to start simple. I think I'll heed your first advice, and I'll, I'll probably settle down First Hill, just be a small town doctor for a little while. That's what I want to do. Brock nods. That's a good start, and First Hill's a pretty big place, pretty busy from what I hear. And he looks over his shoulder at Sunny. He's like, and you know, I'm, I met some pretty good people out here, and I, I want to stay with them for a while. But I can't leave the vault behind either. I made a promise. I'm going to bring back whatever I was sent to get. I'll come back to First Hill. Maybe I'll try to bring the vault into the, re the real world. Um, he looks at Sunny again. Maybe it's time to open up some trading. Maybe waste a little less rat lives out here. Brock nods. Emphatically, Tuco and Philip are kind of just smiling in the background, like, oh, wow, that's a great idea. Exclusive trading rights. <laughs> Brock chuckles. Yeah, I, I can see that being really good for the vault. Okay, well, we got to head back to Island Town. I will see you on your way back to the vault then. Yeah, I'll be visiting. Just say hi once in a while. They shake your hand, give you hugs. Say their goodbyes. Philip and Tuco kind of tearing up a bit. And they leave with some of the island town security forces. Then we go into a bit of a montage. Uh, we see everyone packing up, limping back as the day breaks over the evergreen. They meet Santiago on the shoreline, waiting in his boat. 
and our camera cuts to the wake of it speeding across the lake, spraying water that catches in the morning light. Uh, the party share a quiet look with each other, a kind of unspoken relief and understanding between them. Uh, we cut to Sunny's tired, uh, withered hands, uh, clutching a stack of V's letters to her mother as we slowly uh, fade to black. After the loss of numerous forces in the north, the Brotherhood pulled all of its remaining forces in the region into their last remaining stronghold called Interbay in the western Evergreen. It is here where the small splinter group of the Greater Brotherhood of Steel continues to hide and wait for another opportunity to expand and bring order to the Evergreen. Holler Lake as a settlement no longer exists. Its walls remain empty. The homes there are barren. There are rumors of tendrils coming out of the sewer drains of the nearby streets, constantly seeking vengeance or revenge as it calls out in the night. No one has ever gone up to verify this because no one wants to go up there. Holler Lake is essentially a dead spot on the map. Following the massive defeat and exposure of numerous agents, the cause regrouped in their headquarters at Overlake. In their secret pre-war bunkers, the cause began to form a new plan with a new region in mind. With no real force stopping them eastwards, the cause sent out the remainder of their agents east to spread the good word of the cause. After the Wasteland Adventurers returned to the first hill, Amelia was given the letter V wrote to her. With a heavy heart, Amelia understood her daughter's reasoning and hoped that one day she'd return with Mark. As Amelia progressed into her elderly years, Sonny and Lance would make it a point to visit the old woman and care for her until she eventually passed from old age. After a quick trip to First Hill to reunite Didi and Sunny, the Ubeda stay in town for a little while. Redmond showed some of the engineers in the machine bay some tricks of the trade and was given numerous offers to stay in First Hill. Redmond declined these offers obviously as he had a responsibility to Jamie to make sure the shop and the small farm were in good shape. Because one day, Redmond wouldn't be there to tend to both and he wanted to be sure they were in top shape for his son to take over. Sonny was reunited with his faithful Brahmin Didi, and they returned to First Hill to open Sunny Sundries. Sonny's business took off. He was able to expand trade between the settlements of the Evergreen, from St. Mark's up to the WPF, and with the help of Jerry and Lance, they established new routes to Paradise Valley and the emerging Vault 6. Inspired by the cooperation he saw at Holler Lake, Sonny urged other communities of the Evergreen to band together and push back against the remaining Brotherhood forces without the draconian tactics of the cause. First Hill thrived, and from it emerged a guild of merchants who elected Sonny to represent them within the settlement's leadership. One of his first acts was to commission a memorial for the people of Garfield as a reminder of those lives that were lost in the conflict. Sonny gave Dee Dee the best life that he could, until eventually she passed away, leaving Sonny to wonder that with his long life, how many more of his friends would he have to bury? And he hoped that number was few. St. Mark's, under the leadership of Sam, thrives. The legend of the Seven Wastelanders is a story told to children for generations and generations. Head of security for St. Mark's had a nice ring to it. And Emmett loved the job. New recruits would wait hours just to hear him speak about the battle and maybe break off a piece of wisdom from him. At the end of his life, Emmett would still walk the grounds of his former patrol route holding an empty missile launcher just to be sure there wasn't anyone causing trouble. Following the events of the Battle of St. Mark's, Cassandra took up the mantle of Captain of the Guard for the settlement. After a few years, the scaver left St. Mark's and headed south. Cassandra made it to New Vegas, where she started a small scaving company. Although not familiar with the proper concept of a home or the feeling of finding her own finish line, Cassandra believed that maybe, just maybe, this was it. After securing the safety of her new friends and helping them complete their goal by discovering the whereabouts of Marcos and V, 
Trish Villanova, the NCR combat ranger, was called to return to her post within the NCR, having feared she may be labeled a deserter for her unaccounted time away. Consequently, Trish returned to duty, but would assume it behind a desk. Days turned into weeks, the weeks into months, and Trish began reflecting on everything she'd been through. The loss of her husband, the horrific slaughter of her squad, the abnormalities and horrors she'd seen with the Sundries gang. Trish decided to retire from the NCR and ended up back at St. Mark's. Setting down roots, she became neighbors and godmother to the Manningham family, who she'd met earlier in her journey. Being known as a local hero, Trish would assume the role of mayor after Sam passed away peacefully in his sleep, until an election could be held. Once the power vacuum was filled, Trish traveled to a small, secluded plot of land that would eventually become known as the Settlement of Howardstown. A beacon to old NCR recruits, dropouts, and exiles hoping to hear stories and legends of the Evergreen. One of the veterans of the Battle of St. Mark's, Ernest made sure that the settlement was safe inside and out. And when not on duty, Ernest would check up on a local legend, Dustin McBridge. The old man's illness eventually caused him to be bedridden. Ernest would always be sure to read him stories of a great mercenary slash suave adventurer who just also happened to be named Dustin McBridge. Vault 6 welcomed the hero back from the wasteland, but also welcomed back those who they believe were dead, as Lance managed to convince numerous rats to return with them on his trip home. The vault stocks overflowed with outside foods, tactics, and brochures written by Lance himself on the different areas and points of the Evergreen. As First Hill's first and only full-time doctor, Lance's practice thrived. Patients came day and night in need of cures for all their ailments, and Lens did in fact have a big impact on the life expectancy of those within First Hill. With the cause scattered and the Brotherhood retreating in their stronghold, raider activity picked up around First Hill. Brock convinced Lance to bring the fight to them, and with a team of Island Town security, they left First Hill to take down the Crows, but Lens was captured and taken away during the chaotic assault. Lens never returned. In some raider circles, there's a recent rumor of a savage, an undefeated gladiator who survived every gauntlet in the Huskies arena. And they referred to him as the Handsome Devil. The townie felt the big stories of the Evergreen had been told. The wondrous merchant left the Evergreen and headed southeast to take a chance at the deserts. Many, many stories from people in these regions tell the tale of a friendly and aloof merchant wandering from town to town, accompanied by a small cat. This merchant is said to always have exactly what the storyteller needs, as well as a small piece of advice. Seeing Sunny be so optimistic about life, Santiago learns that his life specifically can be about spreading good. Santiago begins helping the WPF with survival training and building new gear for future cadets to use. Eventually, Santiago becomes the lead guardian for the WPF. After narrowly escaping death once more, Jerry felt the need to rest. Saying goodbye to their companions, but promising to keep in touch, she made the trek far north back to Paradise Valley. She was greeted with a far warmer welcome than she had expected and found the much needed rest she was looking for. Some weeks passed before a small voice in the back of their mind called to them. The voice sounded suspiciously like their father's. This persistent voice grew a restlessness in Jerry, which prompted them to set out into the wastes once again. This time their mother raised no objection. Evergreen bandits tell tales of Jerry and how you should avoid the small, pipe-pistol-wielding wastelander. If you see her first, that is. The young couple finally managed to escape the Evergreen. With the help of the legendary wasteland adventurers, of course. They spent some time in Paradise Valley and were given supplies and lessons on how to survive in the wasteland wilds before continuing east. Eventually, Mark and V found the place they had been looking for, Twin Snake Falls, Idaho. The family grew with the addition of their two children, Redmond and Amelia. Life for this branch of the New Obedas was tough but peaceful as letters via couriers would always be sent to the couple's families back in the Evergreen. 
and letters would also find their way back to his shop in First Hill, addressed to a one Mr. Sunny Tokase. The Wasteland survivors had changed the Evergreen, maybe not suddenly or dramatically, but gradually, like the growth of a forest. For better or for worse, the places they visited and the lives they encountered were altered forever. But even with the shift in tides, the swaying of principles, and the altering of outcomes for the people of the Evergreen, they realize one thing remains constant in the struggle of humanity's survival. The one inescapable truth that no matter how different the landscape and its people, no matter the rise and fall of civilizations, no matter the passage of time, war, war never changes. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Respect the Crits Wasteland Adventure Fallout Evergreen. If you like what you heard, please consider supporting us by giving us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or whatever platform you use to listen. It's easy, free, helps other people learn about the show, and we love to read your feedback. For more information about the show, visit at Respect the Crit on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or come chat with us in our official Discord server. Jerry is played by Susan Spinader, who you can find on Instagram at Suze Laluz. Lance Burnett is played by Xavier Trudeau Deschen, who can be found on Twitter at Xavier TD. Trish is played by Jamie Lee Bonez, who you can find on Instagram at Jamie Lee Bones. Sunny Takase is played by me, your host, Ian Duncan, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at iDunks. Our guest GM for this game is Alex Herrera, who you can find on Twitter at AE Herrera or on his Twitch channel, Wade Wolf 10. The original music in this episode is provided with license or permission by a variety of talented artists whose info and credits can be found in the episode notes. Please support them by visiting their platforms to hear more of their work and tell them how much you like their music in our show. Our outro song is Some Things Never Changed by Gavin Dunn. You can hear more of his work on Bandcamp and YouTube at Miracle of Sound. The Fallout 2D20 RPG system is licensed by Bethesda and published by Modifius Entertainment. Special thanks to our friends at Modifius. You can learn more and grab your own copy of the official Fallout RPG by visiting modifius.net slash respect the crit. Special thanks to the team at Fallout Cascadia for use of their music. You can learn more about this incredible, ambitious Fallout 4 mod at falloutcascadia.com. And remember, whatever the system, whether it's a miss or a hit, you always gotta respect the crit. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the wasteland. Wasteland.